Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, this is such an exciting opportunity. I have been really disappointed that I couldn't join the other sessions this week. Ah, everybody has so much to do before we go on the um, holiday break. My name is Roxanne Russell, and um, I have two roles. One is as the Director of Online Education for Columbia University School of Public Health, which you can imagine has meant my year has been very busy as we had to take the whole school online. Um, but I also have been working on this passion project that I wanna share with you today, which is Read Ahead AI. And I think that it has um, emerged as a really amazing, powerful partner for um, everyone working in the open education resource space, particularly in open educational resource texts and textbooks. I uh, got involved with higher education, um, zero textbook cost and OER, OER initiatives um, starting in 2013 when we worked with RevUp Montana to help put all of their materials into Skills Commons, which is a major OER repository. And then also I have worked now for five years with Colorado Community Colleges Online, and they've already been recognized for their excellence in zero textbook um, initiatives. However, this tool that I wanna show you today emerged um, when I was a PhD student in instructional technology and design at Georgia State University and was working with a high school teacher. And um, his struggle was that students just seem not to be able to sustain the attention to read their textbook materials or any sort of fiction, just basic reading with a book. They were really struggling with um, so many of his students just to get through one 50 minute period of independent, sustained, silent reading. So at that time, this was now 12 years ago, um, we started just experimenting with simple things like PowerPoint to break the material up into chunks. And then we started experimenting with what we were learning from the literature about how to prime the pump for students and get them um, really calling on their prior knowledge and experiences and how to make predictions about what was coming in the text. And so I in a very belabored fashion, um, would take a PowerPoint of, say, a short story by Emily Dickinson, I mean, a poetry by Emily Dickinson, or a short story by um, Edgar Allan Poe, and break it into chunks, and then find um, the teacher and I would work to find uh, words to preview for the students. And this we tested across a rigorous uh, year-long study with teachers uh, in uh, Title I, which is a low-income school in Atla outside of Atlanta, Georgia, um, in an experimental design. And we actually found that the method we were using with the PowerPoint was working. However, it was so uh, ridiculously time-consuming and tedious to create those presentations that it was difficult to find traction in the years that followed for teachers to use that method. So over the last uh, 10 years, I have worked with an amazing group called Stride AI, which is an artificial intelligence partner um, in India, where they have expertise in natural language processing, and they helped us build a tool to help get those words and choose those words, and then worked with developers to build a tool to do this automatically. So now what we have um, is an amazing partner for open educational resources for people who don't have the time to turn their texts into texts that might be more accessible for texts that might um, be uh, used in different and more creative and critical thinking ways with students. Um, and they can take that text and stick it into our tool and it automatically creates a guided reading activity. So. That's what I want to demonstrate here for you right now. Um, this is our website. Let me say that all of this is free. This is all completely open. This is a personal passion project of mine. I've worked for years and years, and my husband has been an incredible partner. He and I have an online education consulting business, so we have developers and we have people who can do this kind of work, and so it's like our passion project on the side. So I just wanna demonstrate for you what would happen if you went to look for um, some open educational content to read through Read Ahead, what you would find. So this is our library. And um, say you wanted to find like a science topic for an 11th grade student. 
and you have these choices, you say, okay, well, I might like to learn about the cell cycle. And what you'll find here is that we are working closely with um, other partners out there in the open educational resource universe who have materials. So for example, this one came from the amazing um, folks, the Open Text um, Initiative in Canada. This is an excerpt from that text. Uh, we've used the Creative Commons license to mark that text and say, you know, to make sure that we use the, the did what was asked with that license and gave the attribution. And then this is what um, you can do with this text that's different from how you would have encountered it in its original form. So as you can see, it gives the students a chance to focus on some of the key concepts. These key concepts were pulled by our smart skimmer, the AI that pulls these concepts. They can move through it in their, at their own pace and start to make predictions about what these things mean, start to actually engage with the text at a level that for some students is more accessible and um, have a preview of what's to come. Those of us who are expert teachers do this without even thinking about it. So, they get a chance to move through the material at a speed that is right for them. And this, they may see this and think, I have no idea what this is. Oh, I do know what a cytoskeleton is. They start to picture it. And all of this before they are faced with all of this text, which for many students can be overwhelming and they don't have the stamina to get through it. They've been given some, um, some preview, some forecasting to help them now read this entire passage in its, um, whole form. It also takes over the screen to try to reduce distractions that we know they experience reading from the screen. We've seen an amazing uptick in the use of Read Ahead, as you can imagine, since March. I mean, exponentially, it has shot through the ceiling. So the reason I wanted to show you this today is because we have um, a Read Ahead research community. I have a survey link I can share with you in the chat where we would like to invite anybody um, who is interested in doing research using the Read Ahead um, tool, we would really like to invite your participation in using the tool and in learning more about how students read and how they learn and how this connection of being able to create these materials. So one thing that um, is really important to understand about Read Ahead is that it is not just a tool where you go to a library and find things and we create all the content. Our users are creating the content. So you can find <clears throat> any um, text on the web and we, that student. have I used up my time? Yeah, you're, you're at time and you're into the Q&A time, which is fine. You can okay, use great. and we can just shift the Q&A to the chat. No problem. No, that's fine. I'm happy to uh, take questions. I just wanted you to see that it's a creation tool. So we have linked everybody to open resources they might use and show them how they can just put content in and run our smart skimmer um, to create these presentations anytime. And Very I would good. love to take questions. Excellent. We have time for one question. Uh, the floor is open. You can either ask your question in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask with your microphone. I'll just make a comment, Roxanne. It's really great to see a tool that's applicable to uh, K-12 as well as all other levels of education. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. 